Okay, here is the Tesla LDU Rotor Coolant Delete Kit. This kit is designed to be installed in the car and it solves the major problem with the Tesla large drive unit, which is coolant leaks that can destroy the motor and the inverter. So the problem that develops in the Tesla large drive unit comes from the rotor cooling. Coolant comes in the bottom port, flows through a tube inside the spinning rotor and then it comes back out of the rotor, exiting the top of this part. The seal that allows this to happen eventually goes bad. And when that seal goes bad, coolant will leak past the rotor seal into the motor, eventually continuing on into the inverter, destroying the entire drive unit. The first step to installing this kit while in the car is to crimp off the coolant lines entering and exiting the drive unit. To minimize coolant loss, try to crimp off the lines as close to the drive unit as possible. Next step is to remove the bolt retaining the o-ring fitting into the factory part. Make sure you have a catch can or bucket below this part and then you can gently pry the fitting loose allowing the coolant to drain. It will drain both out of the hose and the end of the drive unit. Once most of the coolant has drained out, we can locate the point at which we will cut the factory part. These arrows indicate the easiest place to cut, which is just above the port for the original fitting. Before we cut this part, we need to protect the coolant port from any aluminum filings. This can easily be accomplished by using a paper towel and pushing it as far into the original port as possible. You really want to get it in there tight so we don't get any filings where they should not go. The tool required to make this cut is an oscillating saw with a metal cutting blade. Then you will carefully cut just above the original port, careful not to go too far and cutting into the end cap of the motor. There is plenty of room behind it so the cut can carefully be made, removing this bottom section of the original part. Once the cut has been made, you can remove the two remaining 10 millimeter bolts and remove the part. This will allow more coolant to drain from the lower stator port as well as some residue from the upper port. We're now ready to install the dust cap on the upper port. It can be made watertight by using RTV sealant around the perimeter and then gently tap the plug into place until it's nice and flush. Next we are ready to remove the coolant tube in order to cap off the unused ports. There are three fasteners, one fastener at each fitting and one retention clamp in the middle of the tube. After removing all three of these fasteners, the tube can be removed and we will reuse the O-rings on the end, placing them onto the provided dust caps. These dust caps can now be installed where the factory fittings used to be using the factory hardware. When installing this kit in the car, it can be difficult to access the outer fitting on the top of the coolant manifold. So the alternate installation method is to cut the coolant pipe near the hold down clamp, removing the inboard section of pipe. With this removed, you can then install the dust cap above the differential. And it's also a good idea to seal off the remaining pipe with some RTV silicone to prevent dust and moisture from entering this now unused section of pipe. The original plastic barb fitting can be removed from the input coolant hose and it is replaced and relocated with the new barb fitting, providing increased coolant flow directly into the stator housing. The original part was sealed to the stator with this o-ring inside the machine channel. This o-ring is most likely deteriorated and flattened to where it may or may not seal completely when reinstalling a new part. In order to ensure a long-lasting watertight seal, I highly recommend removing the original worn o-ring and sealing this connection with RTV silicone. 
The proper way to install the silicone is a thin but complete layer on the cleaned motor side as well as the barbed fitting side. Next you can install the OEM bolts into the fitting and place them into the socket making a nice straight connection onto the port. Take these only finger tight until you see a little bit of silicone starting to squeeze out all the way around the fitting. Once you get to this point, you need to let the silicone cure for the manufacturer's recommended time period. After that time period has passed, you can come back and tighten these bolts the rest of the way, ensuring a trouble-free, leak-free seal. With your fitting securely fastened, you can now reinstall the coolant hose and remove the clamps from either side of the drive unit. Then you are ready to top off the system with some G48 and you can now enjoy a leak-free drive unit for years to come.